they say a change is as good as a holiday and it can be as easy as moving uh, some furniture around at home to instantly change the mood in your house. It's an ancient Chinese technique and it's called Feng Shui. Celebs are turning to Feng Shui in spades as the Beckhams get ready to welcome baby number four. Victoria has reportedly redecorated her posh interiors with a Feng Shui advisor in a bid to get rid of bad energies. So, for those of us who haven't got a feng shui advisor like the Beckhams, Jane Langoff from Feng Shui Concepts is here to give us a few tips for our own homes. Hi, Jane. Hi. Hi. Okay, give us the basic principles of, of feng shui. Well, energy affects every sort of building yeah. and um, feng shui is about how the energy affects you from a mental, physical and spiritual level. And um, basically when people are aligned with positive energy and they're living in a supportive environment then what we find is that they're more likely to experience better fortune, better health and also more harmonious relationships. Right, sounds good. Now Victoria Beckham has redone a few rooms at home. Why don't we start yes. and talk about the, the nursery. What sort of advice do you give here? So with the nursery, um, firstly I would advise that uh, you would not have not hang mobiles above um, a cot. Oh, really? So, yes. Why not? Um, well, I think that the energy that comes from the mobile directly above um, a child, whether it be above their head or any other part of their body, can actually impact on their health. So it's not... Um, it's not a good thing from a feng shui perspective. But you know that Mo means as a parent we've got to spend more time with the babies at bedtime. Well... <laughs> Well, what if Desperate Housewives or Grey's Anatomy's on? You just turn the mobile on and you go, no? <laughs> no, you'll have to entertain them in right. other ways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you could put one above a change table. That's that might right. be a it's nice idea. It's more appropriate above, above a change table. Mm -hmm. What about the master bedroom, Jane? With the master bedroom, you want to have a bed up against a solid wall. So having a bed along windows like they are here is actually not a good thing from a feng shui perspective. Yes, yeah, so that's you why want we to don't have... leave the bed here <laughs> during normal working hours. So you'd want to have... So... <laughs> <laughs> this is the bed from Kylie's trailer. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> You want to have um, support and protection um, behind the people that are sleeping in the bed. The other thing is that uh, electronic equipment isn't ideal as well, so having big televisions such as that. Okay. Is and that okay to have one at the foot of the bed as behind? As... No, it's no. not. Oh, okay. And so then... no TV in the bedroom? No TV. So in no the mobiles to put the kids to sleep, no TV in the bedroom? That's right. I'm loving this segment. The other what... thing, Larry, is um, no mirrors in the bedroom as well. Oh, so. see, now this is over. Now this segment is over. <laughs> you have pushed our relationship too far. Does that include the ceiling? That includes the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, so just, just about... So now you're going to have to take the mobile down from above your bed with little me's going around. What about the, what about the foot of your, of your master bedroom? Because is that not supposed to be near a window or something? Uh, well, we don't want the foot of the bed to be in direct alignment with the door. Uh, because all the it means all your energy goes out of the room, is that well, right? Well, the energy from the doorway actually hits uh, the, the people that are sleeping in the bed. And that's actually referred to as the coffin position. Now, it yes, doesn't I... mean that you're necessarily going to die. It's just not a good position to be um, sleeping in. And the coffin position is just a symbolic thing. <laughs> Can, so, we're talking so, about position of the bed. Yeah. In the oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and uh, let's, uh, let's talk about living areas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how can people change the, the feng shui or feng shui in their living area? Okay, well, one way is to keep clutter to a minimum mm -hmm. because clutter blocks uh, the free flow of energy throughout a space. Okay, so what um, are we looking at here? We've got some pictures here. What is, what's this showing Yeah, so us? These, these are pictures of a before and after space that I worked on. So with the, before, with the uh, living room before, yeah. um, it had a lot of face brick which made it sort of cold and... Uh, and uninviting. Yeah. What we did was we we needed to uh, warm up the space because the room was uh, sort of in a southern part, uh, mm. a southern aspect, and we wanted to add uh, some earth and fire colours just to warm warm it up. The other thing we did was um, introduce some uh, symbolic things like uh, we had some chrys chrysanthemums on the wall which represent long life and nobility, uh, some praying monks which uh, represent peace and harmony, and also uh, fresh flowers to uplift the energy right, in space. Right, so bits and pieces all around make you feel better, generally speaking. That's You've right. transformed a backyard as well, not only inside. This stuff happens outside. Run us okay, through this. Okay, here we go. This, is, this looks great. If we turn around, we can see it here. Mm. Yes, that's right. So, so that's a before space where the... Uh, the area in the backyard was very sort of cold and damp well, and, it's uninviting, uh, grass, yeah. and uninviting and grass mm. wouldn't, wouldn't grow there. So what we did in that space was uh, used, used pavers and, and then we moved uh, the grass area to a, a northern facing spot where mm. the sun could, uh, you know, help the grass yeah. to grow. Okay, so that's part feng shui, part Jason Hodges, aren't you? You're yeah, exactly. Clever. 
<laughs> you say the front of the house is really important. What should people at home keep in mind? Uh, what they should do with the front of the house is make the house as inviting as possible from mm. the front. So you want it to look appealing and inviting because uh, the front of the home actually represents opportunities and the opportunities that can come, uh, come to you. Okay. So, Jane, it's great information. Thank you very much. Just so. Okay, so here we go. Have a mirror directly. So the mirror, Larry, that you're taking no. out of the bedroom, that yeah. you can put. There you go. You put it opposite your well, door. No, no, no. We don't That's... want a mirror directly opposite the door. Oh, avoid. Sorry. That's right. I'm... Because having a mirror directly op directly opposite the front door symbolically reflects energy and opportunities out of the house. You're so if you need to have a mirror um, in your entrance, it's best to place it towards the side or in an area where it can reflect um, a beautiful garden view and so forth. What if the benefits of having a mirror in your bedroom outweigh the benefits of feng shui? <laughs> You've got to weigh it up, haven't you? <laughs> Oh, right. well, that's your own Jane's speech. No, thank you. Thank you very much. That was a great segment. Massive mirror sale at the Emders this weekend. Be in early. Now, we need to say thank you very much for Target uh, for providing the baby's cot and the setting. And while Domain supplied us with this bedroom setting, uh, thank you very much, Domain. Thank you. Thanks, nice Jane. In just